I did it. I found every OSHA violation that I could possibly find in Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. I'm filming this at 12.46 in the morning after spending 12 hours relentlessly trying to finish this series. <laughs> And because I never properly introduced myself, my name is Lindsay, aka Fruit Shark on TikTok, and TikTok is where the series kind of sprouted for me. I got a bit of traction on there, um, talking about how I've been compiling a Google Doc of all the OSHA violations in FNAF, and I had tons of comments telling me to bring it to YouTube. And so I did. <laughs> I'm like beyond grateful for the amount of attention I got on there, and I'm also so excited to share this with you because this has been such a passion project for me. Um, I have spent like this entire week, like every single day, re-watching the same playthroughs just to see if I missed anything to make sure I have an accurate view. And let me tell you now, FNAF is terrible with OSHA violations and you will see this throughout this video. And I mean security breach? I thought, I thought sister location was going to be the worst one. Security breach is by far the worst. Like. There's generators in the play structures. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. And just like really quick before we get into anything, I just want to say once again, I am like immensely grateful for the amount of love that I got on TikTok. I've been waking up to so many notifications every day that is just like so wonderful. And also you guys are like some of the funniest people on earth too. Like I crack up reading your comments. <laughs> Keep in mind that there might be a chance that I'll miss a couple things. It is a monster of a game to get through when it comes to finding stuff like this. It's a monster of a game to get through just when you're not. So just keep that in mind. And if you see anything that I don't, feel free to put it in the comments. And if I missed a ton and there's a demand for it, I will make a part two. I'm sure you're curious about the maps behind me. They're maps of every single level of the pizza plex. And I'm gonna be color coding every single hazard as we go. You might notice that there's some that I've already done. That's because when I was watching footage, I started marking it before I decided to do it this way, but I think it'd be more fun doing it like this. For the sake of knowing what the colors are, I'll also be explaining it, but that's what it is. So one of the most important things that we actually need to discuss, uh, and we'll set the standard for the rest of this video, is whether or not the animatronics count as employees. And I'm not necessarily talking about like the staff bots and like map bot and all of that. I'm really focusing on like Freddy, Roxy, Monty, and Chica because they they show emotions. So the question is, is that do they receive the same benefits as the human employees? And it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but once again, they're shown to show emotions. Monty is shown to have anger and jealousy issues. And Chica is shown to like pizza so much that she attacks other staff for it. You know what? Freddy misses Bonnie. Like they have complex relationships with each other. And you see Roxy like even crying at one point about her own self-esteem. Another FNAF game that is pretty well known for having its sentient animatronics is Sister Location, which is my personal favorite. And here, I'm gonna play something for you guys. Alora is going to follow you. She will try to catch you. I will help you avoid her. She will not follow you inside the scooping room. She is afraid. So yeah, I know that technically Ennard is the one talking to us, so whether or not we can trust them is like up in the air. But at the same time, it is shown throughout the game that the animatronics don't like the situation that they're in and they don't like going to the scooping room. For those of you who have not played Sister Location, uh, the scooping room is essentially a room where they use the scooper uh, to rip the endoskeletons out of the animatronics for maintenance and to disassemble them. And now you might be wondering, well, Lindsay, we're talking about Security Breach, not Sister Location. That's very true. But Freddy asks if the other animatronics are okay whenever Gregory starts talking about them getting destroyed. The movement through the walls. Really? I didn't know Roxy could see through walls. These are Roxy's eyes? Well, yeah. There was an accident in the raceway. Is she okay? It's clear they have this really complicated and like complex relationship with each other and also a care for their physical safety. 
So therefore, I've decided that their physical and emotional needs need to be met just as much with the human employees. And this game does not do that. Not at all. Oh. All right. So now that we've decided that the four animatronics are employees, let's move on to our first category, which is fire hazards and exits. Oh, come on. This is a FNAF game. The fire hazards are going to be pretty bad, um, but it's, it's really bad in this game. This game, in fact, is so bad with emergency exits that it's an entire plot point in the game is just trying to figure out how to get out of there. Like, the point is to escape the Pizzaplex. You might be thinking, oh, well, you know, it's overnight. No, because they still have one human employee. So even if we aren't even counting the animatronics as employees, which I am, then they still have to have unlocked emergency exits. So the first violation I have for this game is 191037B4. If the direction of travel to the exit or exit discharge is not immediately apparent, signs must be posted along the exit access indicating the direction of travel to the nearest exit. Essentially what that means is that you have to have signs pointing where to go, and some areas actually do have them, believe it or not, but most don't. <laughs> this game is an absolute maze to try to figure out where you are. Then of course there's just trying to figure out what rooms are exits and what ones aren't. Uh, 191037B5 states that each doorway or passage along an exit access that could be mistaken for an exit must be marked not an exit. Uh, this doesn't happen almost ever. There's maybe a couple moments where like there will be labeling for certain rooms, but nothing will say like not an exit. In fact, like so many things just like aren't really clear what's going on in this game. Uh, for example, there's the question we've all been asking, hey, why is this room on fire right now? This falls under a couple of things. Uh, first off, there's no fire alarm going off. There's no sprinklers going off. It's really unclear how long it's been on fire for because we never see the fire start. It's just been there. So the first one I put it under is 191037E. An employee alarm system must be operable. Employers must install and maintain an operable employee alarm system. Um, I don't, there's no alarm in that room. Like, are they working? Are there sprinklers? Is this just like the resident on fire room? Like what is going on here? And then if we assume that the alarm isn't working, then 191037A4 states that safeguards designed to protect employees during an emergency, e.g. sprinkler systems, um, alarm systems, fire doors, exit lighting must be in proper order at all times. Now here's the thing, I did see like fire alarms in some areas, but none of them were going off when there's just a room on fire, so I don't think that anything's working. Let's talk about emergency exits again. Uh, 1910 37A3 states that exit routes must be free and unobstructed. No materials or equipment may be placed either permanently or temporarily within the exit route. The exit access must not go through a room that can be locked. Every single security office has those battery powered doors that can just trap you in there if they run out of power. Freddy, are you there? I'm trapped. Chica found me. There's only one security door. Not to mention the loading docks. Let's talk about that. I think so. There's a funny lock box with a badge on it. You need a certain level of security clearance to open the emergency exit? Let me show you guys a clip really quick. Yeah, uh, you need to be a VIP to be able to access the fire escapes. What? <laughs> that is insane. The next one is 191037A, the danger to employees must be minimized. Aside from the daily risk of lawsuits, there's also the risk that something might be hiding inside whatever you just purchased with that steeply discounted price tag. 
Of course, that would only be a serious danger if there were something outside that's been trying to get in for months now, which we are not confirming to be the case. Anyways, danger to employees must be minimized uh, in terms of exit routes, meaning that the battery powered doors are a major problem. Next one is 1910-176C, which is housekeeping. This is going to be in literally every single section a part of this video. Um, storage areas must be kept free from accumulation of materials that constitute hazard from tripping, fire, explosion, or pest harborage. So I put this under fire hazards. It's going to go in every single section because it pretty much breaks every single rule of this. Um, there's open flame just sitting in the sewers, by the way. And I mean, of course, the resident room on fire, but we're all, we're all familiar with her by now. But like, no, really, there's just open flame sitting in the sewers. Okay, so let's put it on the map. Keep in mind, this is what I'm using for this section. It's technically, it says obscured exit, um, but I'm changing it to fire hazard, don't worry. I fixed it, we're good. All right, so here's what maps look like right now. You're gonna notice that level four is not up there. I have it right here with me. Because to be honest, Bonnie Bull is looking pretty up to code. Like maybe they shouldn't have decommissioned Bonnie because honestly, pretty good. It's almost two in the morning. Okay, let's move on to sanitation hazards, which honestly, this one is one of the bigger <laughs> sections for this game. Should not surprise you at all. I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing I am. Hey, Fazbear Entertainment, why is there trash piles everywhere? Let's start off this section with 1910-141H, food handling. All employee food service facilities and operations shall be carried out in accordance with sound hygienic principles. Have you guys all seen that kitchen? I believe it's near the Fazer Blast area that has the bugs crawling out of it and it's just a pile of trash with roaches. Hello? Like, this is not an abandoned facility. This is being used day to day, and they just have, like, a trash pile with roaches crawling out of it? I just... I was rooting for you. Fazbear Entertainment. I thought Sister Location would be worse than the Pizza Plex, and I am so wrong. This place is so nasty. You guys have to understand how nasty it is. And then there's 1910-141-G4, sanitary storage. No food or beverages shall be stored in toilet rooms or in an area exposed to toxic material. So, here's the thing. I would say, like, okay, they, they are properly putting things away. But with their trash, it, like, it is so bad. Like, I don't think that any food should be in the same room as the immense amount of trash that they have in uh, any of their kitchens. Especially the one where Chica gets compacted. That kitchen is so bad. 1910-141-A31. All places of employment shall be kept clean to the extent that the nature of the work allows. Already covered the kitchens, but there's trash piles everywhere. I literally found a trash pile that is in the shower. Why is there a trash pile in a random shower? I don't understand. And in just a bunch of random bathrooms. Like there's such big trash piles and also like just random clutter everywhere in this game. All right, 1910-141-A32, the floor of every workroom shall be maintained so far as practical in a dry condition. And then it goes on to essentially talk about how if there's wet processes being used, like in the sewers, you need to have proper footwear. Now you have to follow along with me, okay? Vanny is in the sewers and she is not given proper footwear to be there. Neither is Chica. Understand, I probably sound crazy, that you might not agree with this one, but they need to have proper footwear. She's wearing a fursuit. She is not safe to be in the sewers. She is going to fall into the pit of just robots that kill you. Also like the things that they consider platforms in the sewers. You mean the wooden boards? The, the this wide wooden boards that you expect your employees to traverse? That is insane. Absolutely insane. 1910-141-A-4-2. All sweeping, solid, or liquid waste 
shall be removed in such a manner as to avoid creating a menace to health. That trash has been there a long time. Here's the thing, I was like, okay, well, it's like kind of like a trash room. So maybe like it's just there temporarily and there is a sign of like those um, like forklift things, like being able to take the trash out. But some of like the old bots that are in there, like they look like they've been there for a long, long time. And I guarantee you they have not cleaned out that area. Also, there's an area where you walk in, you can see the particles in the air, which clean air falls under 1910-94A16, uh, which is clean air, air of such purity that will not cause harm or discomfort to an individual if it is inhaled for extended periods of time. All right, 1910-141G3, waste disposal containers. Uh, essentially, they shall be emptied not less frequently than once each working day unless unused and shall be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition. There's this part where you can literally just climb over all of the piles of trash, and it is crazy. Not to mention the fact that they have so much trash built up down in that room that it's created a trash maze, and it's insane to me. 1910-141A5, vermin control. Every enclosed workplace shall be so constructed, equipped, and maintained so far as reasonably practical as to prevent the entrance or harborage of rodents, insects, and other vermin. Once again, I mentioned the kitchen that is near Fazer Blast. I really hope I can find footage of that kitchen because there are roaches crawling out of a garbage pile there. It is so bad. It's so nasty. I feel like maybe they should stop firing the human employees and replacing them with robots. All right, so this one I was very torn on whether or not to show because honestly, some of my evidence for it is a little shaky. Uh, but it's 1910-141-C11, uh, and it's essentially about uh, the number of bathrooms you need for employees. Now, you're probably wondering, Lindsay, there's so many bathrooms in the game. Yes, but a lot of them are hidden behind uh, security levels. Another thing that we just really don't know is there's so many different like security clearances, uh, and people in my comments were trying to tell me that maybe it's uh, just a nighttime protocol, but it doesn't really make sense because there's only one human security guard and it seems like the staff bots like kind of remain to like one area. It's really unclear how like employees of like the lowest security clearance go to the bathroom. Then you're probably wondering, Lindsay, there's bathrooms that are in the daycare and the arcade. Those don't have security clearances. They don't, but they do in a way. The employees still need to get the daycare pass and the dance pass to go to those areas. And this is confirmed through this. This is what I found. The employees still need to get the passes that the customers get to go to different areas. For a place with the number of employees that they have, I guess around like 100 to 150 for the amount of employees, um, they would need to have at least six bathrooms. And they do have that, but once again, it's behind different clearances. Closest bathroom, I believe for lower level employees is in the utility tunnels. And then after that, I believe there's one that is in Chica's Cakes as well. It seems really inconvenient for the employees to have to go up several levels or go down several levels just to go pee. If anyone knows if there's like easier bathroom access than that, please comment it down below because I was kind of going crazy over it. All right, this violation again, 1910-176C, housekeeping. Storage areas shall be kept free from accumulation of materials that constitute hazards from tripping, fire, explosion, or pest harborage. Once again, the roaches in the kitchen. All right, so let's mark the sanitation ones on the map. There's all the maps. If you see anything on there that you're like, I don't know what that is, it's under the same exact violation, or it's like just a repeat of something I've already said. All right, we're on to my favorite category, which is electrical, because what is going on? Everything is sparking in the game. They optimize their power usage super weird. The generators are a whole other conversation. Sun and moon are a whole conversation. The security doors are an issue. It just, oh man, it's like the gift that doesn't stop giving. So let's start off with 1910-37B, which is lighting must be adequate and appropriate. Uh, there's a lot of places that make sense for the lighting to be pretty dim. And then there's other places that make me like question, like why is it so dark in here? Like I get that it's nighttime and everything, but um, even when you stay and it's past 6 a.m. when the doors open, there's still places where it's like, why is it dark? <laughs> 
And it's not even just the fact that like the lights are dim. It's also there's lights that are flickering everywhere, like literally everywhere. Uh, then there's the whole deal with sun and moon where it's like clearly this is an issue if they have five generators in the daycare and five more in the sewers, they must have issues with their lighting. And I guess on the topic of generators, we should talk about the daycare. And this is so requested. Now, if for some reason you don't know, uh, essentially early in the game, you get stuck in the daycare with an animatronic called Sun, who when the lights turn off, will turn into Moon and will chase you around the daycare while you have to turn on the generators to get the power back on. Where are the generators, you may ask? In the play structure. Hello. <laughs> so 1910 303 requires employers to mark electrical equipment with descriptive markings, including the equipment's voltage, current, wattage, or other ratings. Um, technically, I haven't seen this on any of the electrical equipment in the game at all, but especially with the generators, both in the sewers and the daycares, you don't see that at all. Now, I know what you guys want me to talk about with the generators and it's the fact that kids can get access to them. Truthfully, because it's OSHA, we can't care about that. Uh, what we do care about is employee safety. No thinking about the kids, no thinking about the customers. We don't think about this, okay? There's no talking of sun making a kid piss themselves. We can't care about that. The only thing we can care about is if they're causing a biohazard. That is the only thing related to children that we can care about in this instance. Issues like that would go through other avenues, not OSHA, because OSHA is exclusively employee safety. But we will discuss further why the generators and play structure are unsafe for employees. All right, so in 1910-335B, OSHA requires employers to use alerting techniques, safety signs and tags and barricades and attendance, uh, essentially to warn and protect employees from hazards which could cause injury due to electric shock. There is no signage on the play structure to warn that this is like an electrical room. And don't worry, those of you guys are fans of Sun and Moon, we will circle back to Sun and Moon later in a different violation. For now though, 1910-303-B1 electrical equipment should not be located in damp, wet, and extreme temperatures. This is referencing the sewers. Um, there's absolutely no guarding techniques to keep the generators away from the water. There's just loose generators sitting around in the sewers. All right, so 1926-416-B2, working spaces, walkways, and similar locations shall be kept clear of cords so as to not create a hazard to employees. This place is trip hazard galore. It is insane. We have the third floor audio visual booth, several security rooms, the vents which maintenance has to go through, the play structures, the sewers. It's one of the worst hazards here in terms of quantity. Like there's so many places that it is. And so many of these cords are sparking too, which brings us to 1910-303-B1 which is examination. Electrical equipment shall be free from recognized hazards that are likely to cause death or serious physical harm to employees. I just mentioned the wires that are sparking everywhere, uh, but let's also talk about Freddy. We'll circle back to this moment again later, but the fact that if you make one mistake on Freddy, do you know what happens? Good job. Now use the testing console to run diagnostics and complete the procedure. He kills you. Yeah, he he just straight up murders you. And this is a recognized hazard. Emergency. The protective cylinder will protect important service personnel outside of the protective cylinder. Deactivating animatronic safety protocols now. It is recommended that no mistakes are made during the procedure. Freddy is also known to frequently malfunction and just fall over as seen in the beginning of the game. Chica is shown to attack staff bots over pizza flavored things. And then back to the sparking wires, there is a high voltage zone 
right next to first aid where the wires are sparking over the guardrail. Which then that brings us to 1926-416-B1, which is essentially guarding techniques. Uh, and it just has to do with making sure that when an area has a bunch of electrical equipment to make sure it's properly guarded so when people walk by, they don't get injured. Now, they do try to do some guarding, not always, sometimes they do. And when they do, it usually doesn't work. It usually just sparks into the walkway. This is also covered in 1910-303-G21, um, which is another thing that is about properly guarding. We're back to the resident violation of this game, which is 1910-176C, housekeeping. Once again, storage areas shall be kept free from the accumulation of materials that constitute hazards from tripping, fire, explosion, or pest harbages. Uh, once again, ah, there's so many wires. You know how I said I was gonna circle back to Freddy? Uh, yeah, 1910-212-A-3-2. This one's really wordy, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but essentially what it says is that if you are operating on something, you need to not be in the danger zone. And if you are, you need to be properly guarded from being in the danger zone. So the people that are outside the protective cylinder, they're perfectly fine. They are safe, they are guarded from the situation. You though, that have to go in there and fix it. And technically I know we play as a child, so we can't count him. But in theory, if you were to be a mechanic that were operating on Freddy, you would be within the danger zone. And it didn't seem like they had any personal protective equipment in that area, and you would assume it would be nearby. Uh, and I didn't see anything. Once again, you don't get just like burned. You get killed. You get your head bit off. Speaking of injuries to the head, 1910-335-A-15, employees must wear non-conductive head protection wherever there is a danger of head injury from electric shock. We're counting the animatronics as employees. We've already, we've gone over this. They aren't given any like helmets for any of the situations they're in. They are crawling through the sewers, getting go-karts thrown at them, getting hit by a splash bucket, and no one was like, maybe we'll give them something. Of course, in this instance, it's about electrical protection. Uh, there's so many sparking wires. I could almost say half of the pizza plex. They would need some sort of head protection as well as gloves. 1910-334-A22. If there's a defect or evidence of damage that might expose an employee to injury, the defective or damaged item shall be removed from service and no employee may use it until repairs and tests necessary to render the equipment safe have been made. This is a pretty big one because Chica, for example, her voice box has been known to like stun other animatronics and then Monty destroyed his entire room and has like major anger issues. And it's to the point where like, they have to chain up a bunch of fences to keep him out. Then of course, Roxy has been known to destroy like the driving aid bots out of jealousy. And they've tried to do things like, okay, like we'll put the pizza scented stuff like over here, away from Chica, but that didn't solve the problem at all. In fact, like no one was even listening to that because if you go into the trash compactor area, you see a ton of pizza flavored stuff and boxes that are just down there. They make notes of how terrible this is and then they don't do anything to fix it. They're robots, you can reprogram them, right? I've said this before, especially on my TikTok, that I feel like Fazbear Entertainment like has this obsession with authenticity and they almost go too far with it. Uh, we saw it with the spring lock suits uh, before and now we see it with, I feel like they're just giving these animatronics like these super real emotions to the point where they're having existential crises. What am I doing? <laughs> But just in general with their electrical safety, there are several rooms throughout the game that just are overall unsafe. The wires are everywhere. There's sparks flying. There's sparks in the vents constantly. Um, once again, the electrical deterrents on the doors are so unsafe. In fact, in the um, first aid station for kids that's with the endoskeletons, on the floor, there is a sparking wire right as you enter. Same with parts and services. So as you can see, I've already put some electrical ones on the map. Once again, that was before I started filming. All right, so our last category is just overall unsafe slash miscellaneous. It's just a bunch of violations I couldn't really find a place for because surprise, it's Five Nights at Freddy's and there's some weird stuff in here. 
So I mentioned the sewers before. That is like a major area that just is a whole mess. According to 191037G2, the minimum width permitted for a passageway used as an exit access is 28 inches. I count the wood boards you have to get across as exit access because if you were to try to go around them, yeah, you would, um, you'd get killed. <laughs> First off, something that I've been personally excited to talk about is the fact that the entire Pizzaplex is an OSHA violation itself. In several messages, we actually find out that they think that they're building on top of a sinkhole when they're doing construction in Roxy Raceway. Now, at the very end of the game, uh, we do find out what that is, and it's not a sinkhole, but they're building on the burnt down location of the FNAF 6 place. But it practically is like building on a sinkhole. It's unstable grounds. 1926-1402B, the equipment must not be assembled or used unless ground conditions are firm. Essentially, they shouldn't be still using construction vehicles and everything when they know that they're building on top of something that could potentially be a sinkhole. And then we are brought to the stuff with the trash compactor not having a railing. 1926-252B, when debris is dropped through the holes in the floor without the use of chutes, the area into which the materials dropped shall be completely enclosed with barricades. Essentially, above and below, there should be barricades to make sure that nobody falls in the trash compactor. Looking at you, Chica. <laughs> Fun fact, you're supposed to have clearance signs above garages, uh, and there are none. 1910-176E, clearance limits. Clearance signs warrant of clearance limits shall be provided. There are none in the loading docks, and I didn't see any in that garage area in the trash area either. 1910-176A, where mechanical handling equipment is used, sufficient safe clearances shall be allowed for aisles at loading docks, through doorways, wherever turns or passage must be made. Aisles and passageways shall be kept clear and in good repair, with no obstruction across or in aisles that could create a hazard. Look at this. Look at, look at this. Um, the garages and the trash area, that's pretty bad. <laughs> 1910-22-A3, walking working services are maintained free of hazards such as sharp or protruding objects, loose boards, corrosion, leaks, spills, snow, and ice. In the trash area, you quite literally walk on loose boards to, once again, not get killed by the sewage pit of robots. Once again, our resident violation, 1910-176C, housekeeping, storage areas shall be kept free from accumulation of materials that constitute hazards from tripping, fire, explosion, or pest harborage. We're back. <laughs> uh, they decide for the area that DJ Music Man crawls around uh, to store things just super inefficiently. Uh, you can see as he just crawls in an area that he's allowed to be, everything just falls over. Like you would think in this situation, if they have all these like tunnels for him to crawl through and he does janitorial services, why wouldn't they like fasten down all of like their equipment and stuff if they know that this giant spider robot like huge robot is going to be going through there. This also kind of falls under 1910-176B, which is secure storage. Uh, storage material shall not create a hazard. Bags, containers, bundles, etc. Stored in tiers shall be stacked, blocked, interlocked, and limited in height so they're stable and secure. This, okay, so this part is less of a crime than the rest. There's improperly stacked plates all over the pizza flag. Like on security desks and in like really random and weird places. Like I get the kitchen, but like randomly like super high stacked plates on like security, it's so weird. This one we could also argue for the trash compactor situation. It's 1926-501B1. Each employee on a walking working surface with an unprotected side or edge, which is six feet or more above a lower level, shall be protected from falling by the use of guardrail systems, safety net systems, or personal fall arrest systems. Uh, in Phaser Blast, when you go through the Ventavani's room, you see there's this no real fall prevention when you're walking in that catwalk back there. I also will argue the elevator that's on the main stage needs to have railings in between. All right, so this one, you remember how I said I was going to talk about sun and moon for another hazard? 1910-135A1, the employer shall ensure that each affected employee wears a protective helmet when working in areas where there's potential for injury to the head from falling objects. 
you're gonna have to hear me out with this one. Sun and moon are both falling objects. You cannot tell me that sun jumping from that height into the ball pit hasn't killed someone. I would not be surprised if the missing children weren't actually from Vanny, but were actually from sun jumping in the ball pit on top of children. Like sun has a whole balcony that's like just built for him so he can jump in the ball pit. And then moon at the end of each hour overnight, all the power will divert to the recharge stations. And then moon is just free to wander the building for some reason. And when he does that, he hangs from a rope and pretends to swim in the air. Yeah, just from one single rope and he's a machine. Any of the employees need to wear helmets in the daycare. It's so unsafe, it is so bad. <laughs> and then this brings up 191028B11C, personal fall protection systems, uh, such as personal fall arrest, travel restraints, positioning systems. I think Moon needs one that's like better than just a rope. Um, I really do, because if he's gonna do that, and you know what, more freedom to him, I think he at least needs something that's more secure so he doesn't fall and just like shatter into a bajillion pieces. As for Sun, I think personally we need to get him a safety net that's above the ball pit. That way he doesn't land on anybody. All right, so I'm bringing up the personal protective equipment stuff again, but under a different context. Uh, it's not necessarily electrical equipment anymore. Uh, it's just violation 1926-95A. Working with dangerous materials and equipment, you have to have access to personal protective equipment. So, by the end of the game, the animatronics are so messed up that it is like ridiculous. They should have been given personal protective equipment if they expected them to crawl through the sewers, if they expected them to do all of that work. They at least gave Monty sunglasses, which protects him from being blasted in the face by a phaser blaster. Which, by the way, any kid can just get and shoot the robots. Which they are absolutely aware of the fact that the phaser blasters and the, the phaz cams can damage the robots. You see it in several messages. The place just like is okay with kids having these things around robots. So Monty is safe, but the others are not. You can even shoot Freddy. <laughs> Chica, Roxy, and Freddy are not given personal protective equipment against this recognized hazard, so that is a big violation. This brings up a point that I made earlier about Vanny not having the proper footwear, uh, but 1910-136A, general requirements, and that is essentially that the employer shall ensure that each effective employee uses protective footwear when working in areas where there is a danger of foot injuries due to falling, rolling objects, objects piercing the sole, once again, she is literally in a fursuit, walking around the entire pizza plex. And can we talk about how you can just find her therapy tapes? At first I was like, I don't think there's really gonna be a violation for this, but then I realized OSHA does cover stuff with medical records. There's a violation that's 1910-1020C3, which is essentially designated representative, and that is someone where you can sign over any health records that you want the employers to have um so that person can have access to it but anybody that you want to have access to your medical stuff you have to have them sign a bunch of paperwork now is she having everyone in the pizza plex sign paperwork to listen to her therapy tapes no <laughs> they're just sitting around you can find them all over the pizza plex just in random places then there's violation 1926-407B. It's a violation that's in pretty much every game. Equipment must be deemed as safe. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This one's a bit milder. Uh, color identification for hazards. Some places actually do surprisingly have hazard labels, um, but a lot of places don't, so. They tried, I guess. 1910-242A, general requirements. Each employer shall be responsible for the safe condition of tools and equipment used by employees. The driver bot is breaking frequently because Roxy keeps destroying them when she gets mad. No one is trying to fix her at all. <laughs> and it, it just seems a little weird because she's like destroying like their staff bots and all the employees are mad about it. And then also, 
like Freddy freaks out a lot and just like falls over. And I feel weird like counting him as like equipment that the employees use, but at the same time, like the animatronics are. <laughs> so it seems like all of their equipment, aka the animatronics, and just in general, like there's so much breaking equipment everywhere, um, just isn't functional. This one I'm a little iffy about. Uh, it was under ventilation, so I think that I'm interpreting it correctly, but it's 1910-94A31E1. Doors shall be flanged and tight when closed. Um, the vents don't have covers on them. It is 3.30 in the morning. This is overall safety. 1910 22B loads. The employer must ensure that each walking working surface can support the maximum intended load for that surface. There are boards you just walk across. 1910 22C access and egress. The employer must provide and ensure each employee uses a safe means of access and egress to and from walking working surfaces. Once again, there's a board for a bridge. 191022 d2 hazardous conditions on walking working surfaces are corrected or repaired before an employee uses it again. I just don't feel like they're doing that, to be honest. 191030A3, uh, the employer must train each employee in at least the following topics, and it's all about fall hazards. No one is trained in fall hazards, because if they were, then Sun would not be jumping off of that balcony into a ball pit full of children. Okay, 191033A2, the employer shall ensure that each effective employee wears eye protection around flying hazardous objects. We need to wear eye protection around Sun and Moon because they are hazardous flying objects. 1910-133-A1, the employer shall ensure that each effective employee wears appropriate eye or face protection, once again around flying objects. Please, we'll just wear it around sun and moon. Okay, a couple sanitation ones. 1910-134-A2, a respirator shall be provided for each employee when such equipment is necessary. Uh, the sewers are pretty bad and I didn't see any sitting around, so I'm assuming that they aren't giving them to them. And of course, biological hazard signs. There are none around the pizza plex. Uh, in particular, I'm thinking of the pizzeria underneath, aka the sinkhole, uh, where there is a man in a bunny suit rotting away down there. We need a biological hazard sign, please. Okay, and there's one for electricity, 1910-147-A22B. An employee is not required to place any part of his or her body into an area on a machine or piece of equipment where work is actually performed upon the material being processed or where an associated danger zone exists during the machine operation. That is so many words. Uh, don't... The they shouldn't have to go into the protective cylinder like that and like risk getting their head bit off by Freddy. I know I sound absolutely crazy right now and that's because this project has caused me to spiral just a little bit. For context, I'm doing this on top of having seven college classes that are three hours long each, as well as tons of homework and it is the, my last semester of my senior year. So now I thought it would just be fun to help visualize it even more, pushing it past just the color coding and labeling all of the hazards on a bunch of pieces of paper that I wrote out in two hours. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is tape up the uh, everywhere category, which is a, a violation that is taking place at pretty much every single part of the pizza plex. Which, surprise, this is the biggest section that will have the most violations. <laughs> Let's get that taped up. Okay, so I put it up there because I was running out of wall space. Um, so we'll just cram everything in there, don't worry. Okay, so the first thing we have is alarms must be operable. Uh, I don't think there's alarms anywhere that are actually working. Um, genuinely, I just we don't see that anywhere, so. Stick that. Right there. Well, here's a big one. The entire pizza plex itself is an OSHA violation because they are aware of the fact that they're building over a sinkhole, aka the old pizzeria. Yikes. <laughs> Equipment must be deemed as safe and then also nowhere is like prepared to have DJ Music Man crawling around. So really they should have storage areas properly equipped for that type of thing if they're gonna have him go in there. It's insane that they're just like, oh yeah, this giant robot that can tr like trample everything. Oh yeah, he's the janitor. Proper footwear. This is not proper footwear to be wearing in the sewers. I'm sorry, Vanessa, once again, I feel like I'm just like clowning on you right now, but come on, girl, you can do better. My last one and everything is biohazard signs, please, please. I am on my hands and knees begging you to put biohazard signs. So bad. 
This one is essentially like, where am I? Please guide me. Uh, I'm gonna put this in the trash area. Please don't lock your exits. This is gonna go right where the VIP fire escape is. Open flame in both Roxy Raceway and the trash area. Why are none of the sprinklers or alarms working in Roxy Raceway? I would like to know that. Both of these are unlabeled generators. I'm sure you know where I'm gonna put these. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Guarding to make sure that you don't touch anything electrical. This could technically go everywhere, but I was thinking of this one specific location, which is here in the utility tunnels by first aid. Right next to first aid, there are sparks flying right over there. <laughs> There were like two areas I could think of with sanitary storage. One of them is one of the kitchens where you find the Monty mix, and the other is the kitchen with Chica. So respirators must be provided in areas with bad air. So that's the sewers again, as well as the area where Monty breaks through. Floors must be dry. Um, well, here's the thing. They need to be given like waterproof equipment or dry areas, and they aren't given that in the sewers, so that's why I included this. That area is so bad. <laughs> Access and egress slash loads. These are essentially for the plank bridge that are in the sewer area, which is by far our worst area. So this is what it looks like. That's a lot of violations. So now that we have the maps figured out, the last thing that we want to do is find out how much Fazbear Entertainment potentially owes OSHA. So we have 55 violations in total and 48 of them are willful and then seven of them are serious slash other than serious. And I also included fine reduction, which is based on number of employees. I said that maybe around 100 employees is what they had, uh, which would be a 10% fine reduction. So I'm going to do the math really quick and then I'll be right back and I'm going to tape it up on the wall. So I did the math and the total amount of money that Fazbear Entertainment owes OSHA potentially for security breach is $6,356,529 in fines. That is so bad. Oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, leaving a like. Uh, I'm going to be doing more content like this in the future, including one that is going to be every single FNAF game and all of their OSHA violations and how much they owe as well. If you want to see a sneak peek of that, you can go over to my TikTok and follow me there where I'm going to be posting uh, just sneak peeks of some of my favorite violations from each of the FNAF games. I've already done uh, one through six, so please check that out. And honestly, I've even considered doing the FNAF novels, if that's something that people are actually interested in. And after I'm done with Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm going to move on to other game series and do a similar thing. Uh, just comment down below or on my TikTok what you're interested in seeing, and I will consider it. And one more time, thank you guys so much for the amount of support you've given me on TikTok and encouraging me to do stuff like this. It's made me so, so happy, uh, and I hope that I get to do this for you guys again soon. I cannot see.